In today's video, we're gonna be looking at three knives. All of these knives have an equal hardness value. All of these knives have been heat treated completely differently. One of these knives have been heat treated perfectly. One of these knives have been heat treated terribly. Never had that happen before. The other knife somewhere in the middle. We're gonna do a whole bunch of testing to see whether or not we can realistically see a difference between these three knives and to see whether or not hardness is of any importance whatsoever. But first, let me show you what I did to get to this point. This video was pushed to the top of the list due to a massive discussion in one of my last videos talking about knife hardness and its relation to performance. So here you go. I made three identical knives. All three had the same shape. All three had the same angle at 14 degrees per side. All three had the same belt progression, 36, 80, 120, 220, A30 trizec belt, and strapped on a six micron diamond strap. All three were razor sharp. All three tested at 60 to 61 on the Rockwell hardness scale. All three were identical, except I intentionally screwed up two of the three knives heat treatments. Knife number one was austenitized at 1,475 degrees, held there for 10 minutes, and quenched in Parks 50. It had two tempers, each at 400 degrees for two hours each temper. This is a good heat treatment. Knife number two was austenitized at 1,600 degrees, soaked at 1,600 for 20 minutes, and quenched in Parks 50. It was tempered multiple different times at multiple different temperatures in order to hit a specific hardness number. That hardness number was 60 to 61 HC. The exact temperatures are not important since all we are striving for is to hit a specific hardness number. Knife number three, I really screwed up. This knife was austenitized at 1800 degrees and held there for 40 minutes. It was quenched in Parks 50 and again tempered at multiple different temperatures in order to hit that specific hardness number, which was 60 to 61. Remember, we're trying to screw up these last two heat treatments, so the exact tempering time and temperature doesn't matter as long as we hit that specific hardness number, which we did. Never had that happen before. Not the fire, <laughs> but it like welded itself to one of the uh, ceramic pieces inside. It got stuck to it. And if you're curious what this last one, knife number three, rock weld at, straight out of an 1800 degree quench, well, here it is. We've got a touch over 65. Not surprising, but interesting. So now we have three knives, all at almost identical hardness levels. We're about a half a point variance between all three, depending on where we test them at. We have one knife that has a known good heat treatment. We have two knives that have really bad heat treatments, and one of them is really, really bad. So how do we know this? Well, let's do some testing. <laughs> So this is the tip on the 1475 for 10 minutes. This is the good blade. Here's the tip of the knife on the 1600 degrees at 20 minutes. And then last, here's the tip on the 1800 degrees for 40 minutes. Tip strength test starts with a piece of MDF and it's relatively simple. Stab the knife into the MDF and pry. The tip remains. Blade number two, 1600 degrees for 20 minutes. Tip's still there. Blade number three, 1800 degrees at 40 minutes. Uh-oh. <laughs> we just broke the tip. And see what they look like up close again. Here's a tip from a good blade. It's 1475 for 10 minutes. Here's a blade that we quenched at 1600, soaked for 20 minutes. And here's the knife that we quenched at 1800 and soaked for 40 minutes and the tip broke right off in MDF. I then did the same test, slightly harder test, this time in a piece of oak rather than MDF. Ooh. 
Well, that's not good. And here's what they look like up close after the oak. So here's our good blade, 1475 at 10 minutes. This is 1600 for 20 minutes. And here is the 1800 degrees soaked for 40 minutes. And take a look and see just how coarse that grain looks. Next test is the brass rod impact test. This is a pretty simple test, just a solid brass rod. We take each knife and then drop a, uh, basically just a weight, two by four into it from a set distance and see the impact results. Blade number one after the brass rod test. Here is blade number two after the brass rod test. Here is blade number three after the brass rod test. So here we have all three of these side by side here and it certainly looks like to me that we have a lot less damage on the knife with the good heat treatment versus a knife with the bad heat treatment. Now we may have had a double balance on some of those, but I don't think it matters because I can certainly see a lot more deformation on the two badly heat treated knives. Next is the apex stability test. This is a completely unscientific test that involves twisting the knife in a piece of hardwood. I have seen good results with this test before, testing angles as well as hardness. A knife with a lower hardness and poor apex stability will roll the edge. A knife with high hardness and poor apex stability will tend to chip. Apex stability, from what I have seen, is a combination of hardness as well as sharpening angle. These knives have a fairly extreme 14 degree angle per side, so if all the knives show good apex stability at 14 degrees per side, then they will have even better apex stability at a less extreme angle. A quick note, by increasing an angle by just a half of a degree can make a difference between a knife being chippy or rolly and can completely stabilize a poor performing apex. Take a quick look at the apexes after an equal amount of apex stability testing for each knife. This is good knife, knife number one, 1475 for 10 minutes. Here is knife number two, this was 1600 degrees. 20 minutes. And here is knife number three. This was 1800 degrees for 40 minutes. Here's the three side by side and I hope you can see that we did notice progressively worse apex stability in the badly heat treated knives. I want you to remember this, these three images, because there is clearly a difference in the, uh, the way that the apex is behaving in a piece of hardwood. You can see it right here on the screen. It's fairly obvious as far as I'm concerned. The problem is that when we bring this data into our next test, which is the edge retention testing, and this is where I ran into problems because even though looking at these knives up close, you'll say, oh, well, the knife with the good heat treatment surely has better apex stability than the knife with the bad heat treatment. And that should translate directly into edge retention testing. The problem is it doesn't. <laughs> I did all kinds of edge retention testing. I did edge retention testing in cardboard, hardwood, softwood, MDF. I tested multiple uh, different grits on each knife, multiple different stropping compounds, multiple different sharpening methods, you name it. This was literally like three weeks worth of testing. The testing protocol was fairly simple. Test something until it stops shaving and then record the results and see if there's a difference. There wasn't any difference. I mean, I was to the point where it was like one cut would be fine, one cut would not be fine on all of the knives. They would literally draw at exactly the same moment in multiple different tests. It wasn't just like one test, I hit a bad spot and the knife dulled. I mean, it was like they all dulled at exactly the same rate. You can have a, an edge that looks really good when you look at it up close, that'll be completely shaving sharp. And then you have an edge that looks fairly good up close and it won't shave at all. And you can also have an edge that looks fairly banged up up close that'll completely shave. And then you'll have an edge that looks completely banged up up close and it won't shave at all. 
Now here's an example of this after one of the many edge retention tests that I did in cardboard. All three of these edges look completely different in my opinion, and yet all three of these edges stopped shaving at exactly the same time. Now some of you may say, well what about the paper test? Well, I did do the paper test, and the thing was is that the paper test backed up my shaving test results. I, I pretty much got exactly the same results with paper as I did with the shaving test. I sharpened all of these knives to multiple different grits and retested. I even brought each knife to hair whittling sharp just to make sure that they were all in equal sharpness before starting edge retention testing. Even the knife that was the worst heat treated of the bunch sharpened hair whittling sharp with zero problems. And again, through my real world testing process, I was honestly unable to tell a difference. You have all of these different aspects to this where the, where the apex seems like it behaves differently depending on the type of heat treatment that has been applied to it. But that doesn't mean that either knife will perform necessarily differently just because of the heat treatment process when it comes to edge retention. I literally couldn't tell a difference between any of these knives in edge retention. And that kind of bothers me. After weeks worth of testing, I was having issues. The same exact sharpening process. What I know is good and what I know is bad. We're doing pro science here in a garage. What do you want from me? Outright cutting performance. Uh, I'm getting tired of saying edge retention testing. A good chance that I, I could have screwed something up. Probably gonna say that I screwed up the bad heat treatment. I was also running out of arm hair. So where does this leave us in the whole knife hardness versus performance versus heat treatment quality debate? Knife hardness versus performance. In this case, hardness was a pretty good indicator of the performance that we were gonna get out of our knives. And I'm saying that simply because at the same hardness level, regardless of the quality of heat treatment, we exhibited almost exactly the same level of edge retention. And I think when people talk about knife performance, they are talking about edge retention. Now, if we broaden the scope of knife performance outside of edge retention, and we start looking at toughness, then yes, you can definitely see a very large difference. Now, that difference might not be super obvious if you are not using your knife in a specific manner, like a woods working knife or a knife with a Scandi grind, making kindling for a fire. If you're talking about simple folding knives, then you may not see the difference ever. You may have a knife that's heat treated perfectly and a knife that's heat treated like crap and both of them at the same hardness level will perform exactly the same in the vast majority of cases. Now, if you start using the tip of your knife to open a paint can, for instance, then you may run into trouble. Now, in terms of heat treatment quality, we definitely got a better heat treatment quality with knife number one, where we austenized at 1475 for eight minutes, versus knife number three, where we austenized at 1800 degrees for 40 minutes, I believe. Uh, we definitely had significant grain growth within the steel, and that definitely takes down the toughness level. But at the same hardness level, that doesn't seem to really matter in terms of edge retention, and I think the only place with 1084 or possibly other simple high carbon steels that you'll really see a difference is in the toughness of the steel doing things that most people would say is knife abuse anyway. So would you really tell a difference? Maybe, maybe not, depending on the type of knife. So in the final closing to my closing, and I've got to talk about this because otherwise I'm going to end up having to talk about this in some 20 paragraph long comment I leave in the comment section below in response to somebody who had a problem with what I did here. Now keep in mind there are many, 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 many things that we did not discuss during this test. We are only testing one type of steel here, so this is not a blanket statement. Uh, this only applies to this particular steel. Um, it may even only apply to this particular batch of steel, depending on whether or not you can get this particular batch of 1084 again. Now, I think what all of this is generally leading to is whether or not we should be posting hardness data as the sole metric of determining whether or not we have a good heat treatment on a particular knife. 
And the final answer to this, I think, is that it's complicated. <laughs> like I said, there's a whole lot of things that we're not discussing here simply because we could fill up hours worth of time on this. We, we're not even getting into what is happening inside the steel once we reach uh, these higher temperatures for longer soak times. Um, so we're really just scratching the surface of what's happening here. But um, in my opinion, I think that hardness is a pretty relevant factor in determining uh, knife performance, specifically edge retention. Do harder knives generally outperform softer knives when it comes to edge retention? The answer to this, in my opinion and in my experience, is generally yes. But also keep in mind the fact that you are not seeing the entire picture with a simple hardness number. Like in this video, you have three knives, all of equal hardness level, but all of them can have significantly different performance characteristics, specifically when it comes to toughness. And this can be a limiting factor in certain knives.